Right everyone, welcome Ryan here again. How's it going? Today we're just talking about the same subject as last week. We were talking about the drawers, weren't we? See over here, let's just start with what we did last week. So this is what you saw last Sunday's video. It was all about assembling these drawers or showing you how we put them together, gave you a few tips and techniques of what we do. Um, but we're on the second batch now. Sean is um, on them right now. So there's a batch of 10. They are done. I'm gonna just go over um, them complete because the whole point of this video is showing you a few other procedures. But as you can see here, we've utilised the whole bench this time. Um, Sean, in the last video, only came up to here and he got about 10, what was it, 10? Yeah, 10 drawers. Yeah, 10 over there, and there's 26 in total for this job, all MR, MDF. It's nice, we're using the whole bench now efficiently, which is good, apart from the mess that I've made, because I'm, I'm getting in Sean's way, I'm just modifying some drawers and some other bits and pieces. Right, so this is a finished drawer now, and what you see in front of me is the front. And the reason the end grain is showing is because we've designed it so the, the end grain is showing because it's going to get covered with a fascia. Um, if it was um, in, inside a wardrobe, for example, and behind the door, so when you open the door, you don't need a fascia necessarily. We use a finger pull gap, so it's like a 25mm gap in between every drawer. We would do a, a drawer like this with no fascias. We would just make the drawer complete. This is, would be finished. And then on the sides, you generally don't ever see the sides because when you open the wardrobe door, um, you very rarely see the side of the drawers anyway. So that would be the finish on the side, all painted, obviously. So if it was behind the door, it'd be like this, finger pull gap in between of 25 mil. And if it's on the front of something and seen, generally it's got a face on, so we change it so the grain is on the front and the sides run through, yeah? So, um, I flipped this round the wrong way. So let me show you the front now, because that's the whole point of showing you this. Can you see six holes? Yeah, so we've got one, two, three, four, five, six. We pre-drill for the fascia, um, and we come in 50 and 50, 50 and 50 from yep. this joint, not from this. And then we center it as well, don't we? Yeah, on the inside. Yeah, yep. you center it from the inside, yeah, exactly. 50 is from this joint as well, so not necessarily from here, because when you get your drill in, you want the 50 mil to be from the inside of the drawer, yep. so it looks nice. Um, and that is our margins. We generally do six. If we've got a smaller drawer, maybe that big, we'd only do four. We use 30 mil screws um, and a three mil wood drill bit. So that would um, be the way we put the fascias on. Um, to attach the fascia, once we've lined them up, we put the screw through ever so slightly proud on all of them. We line up the fascias and then knock the fascia onto the drawer and it marks those screw, pointy screw bits onto the fascia um, to mark it. And then we just take the fascia off, tiny bit of a pre-drill, put it back on and it lines itself up. Did I explain that correctly? Yes. Yeah? Would the viewers get that? All right, so apart from that, that is the front and how we fix a fascia on. Um, I did talk about um, the drawer having no arises taken off on the inside. So can you see, can you see in here? So basically there's no gaps here or here or here. It's a nice tight joint. It's only been swiped with P240. So when we paint, we don't get a horrible line. And at the beginning we did try and do that, but we've noticed that three coats of paint isn't enough to fill that gap because some bits close up and some bits don't when you paint, when you spray. So it looks a little bit like unfinished. So we've changed that technique. But apart from that, you can have a look underneath how we reinforce the screws on the bottom. Let's get in some light. So you can see how we reinforce every corner, but we alternate each corner. And we put enough pins in there. We glue, pin, 30 mil pins, like I said in my last video, and put one screw. If this drawer was any longer, we put one screw in the centre here as well, but that is more than enough. That is not going to come off for love nor money. So moving on to the drawer runners, we've already pre-drilled for those. And as you can see, we've got side mounted runners. They're 44 mil by 13. Um, so when we create our opening for our drawer, we allow for two 13 mils, 13 obviously either side, but then we allow for another mil. We've had it so many times when we've done 26 mil, and if there's any discrepancy in your carcass, the way you've biscuited or used dominoed or screwed that carcass up, if it's, e if it's ever so slightly smaller, 
it's not going to go in and out smoothly. So making it bigger is better than making the opening smaller. Um, and we've marked um, a line across from the bottom using a combination square. We've come up 22 mil, and that is what we do because effectively that is a half of this. This is 44. Half of that is 22. Because we like to have the runner completely flush at the bottom, by the time the drawer is in, we need this centre part to be cent uh, centre of the flat part. Yeah. So we've worked it out to be 22 mil. So when you screw this smaller section on and you clip it into the bigger section, it's in line at the bottom of the drawer. Make sense? So 22 mil up, and then obviously with the smaller parts, we've just made sure that is the front there now, not the pronged side. We've just made sure that we have made that flush with the front and we're using the oval holes the horizontal oval holes, not the vertical ones, because we like to just, when we're screwing it on, we need to just make sure that we've got that spot on in that direction, in that plane, rather than this plane. You know, because we have got fascias going on. If we did get this, these holes ever so slightly wrong in this way, when it comes to fitting the fascias, we can allow for that in the fascia and adjust the fascia. But the front and back where you want the fascias to all be in line, imagine you had 5, 10, 15 draw fascias all in a row, you need to make sure they're flush at the front. And by using these holes here, these horizontal ovals rather than the verticals, it just allows you to move that draw in and out on the runner. Make sense? Um, Sean made a little template. It's a simple piece of MDF that Sean's used and he's just simply got a couple of lines, okay? where he wants to line that up. He's got an arrow where the front is, um, and he'll simply put that on and just strike his lines across. Once he's got his lines across, he's got a crosshair then because he's got that 22 mil line on it as well. He'll just get a braddle or an awl. I was getting mixed up, braddle or awl. It's an awl, isn't it? I always say braddle. Um, but anyway, it's a sharp point, anything to create that sharp point, and then away you go. You can also just get a thinner template if you wanted to, maybe a piece of six mil and pre-drill. Yep. And then you can literally place it on what you want to drill, clamp it on and pre-drill this way. But um, you've got to go for a really thin bit because I find that if you are using a, th a thick piece of MDF, um, then you've got the chance of that hole being slightly off. Use a thinner piece, I'll probably say six mil. I like this technique where you strike the lines because I think it's a little bit more accurate anyway, rather than just following a hole which could be slightly different. But other than that, I think I've told you everything that you need to know in order to fit these draw runners correctly. Um, remember, you need to allow 27 mil in total, so your opening might be a metre. Um, take away 27 mil, and that would be the size of your draw. Um, Sean has only marked three holes, but once that's on, we probably put another two in there, so five, just to overdo it. Glue and pins, absolutely fine. Then reinforced with a few screws, some 30 mils. Um, again, going over the point that we make this lip, this time one mil longer. And the reason is when you're running your pin gun along, it's got something to follow. So it's just less concentration. You don't need to go, oh, where is it going in relation to that way? You can put your pin gun and just, it follows that line. Okay, and it just makes it a lot easier. So you can just go pin, pin, pin. Really, really quick and simple. Um, and that is it, I think, apart from what you see around us, Sean's on the last batch of 16. I think we're good to go. Remember, you've got the clamps. If you need clamps, they're quite handy. If you want to know anything else, just go back and watch the previous video. Um, other than that, guys, thank you for watching. Have a good rest of the day. Take it easy. Ciao for now.